So immunotherapy is um, where we utilize therapy to treat cancer that either um, mimics or uses the patient's immune system to treat the cancer. So there's many different types and it depends upon um, which approach we're using and what portion of the immune system we're mimicking or utilizing. There are antibody-based therapies, so usually monoclonal antibody-based therapies. They all target different um, surface um, targets on the cell surface, as well as there's um, antibody drug conjugates, um, which are another type of antibody-based therapy, and checkpoint um, blockade, which again is also a monoclonal antibody therapy. There are CAR T cells, um, and there's also um, immunomodulatory agents um, such as lenalidomide. So we traditionally think of our treatment options for lymphoma as being chemotherapy, um, which directly damages the tumor cells, as well as radiation therapy um, and targeted therapy, which gets into specific um, cell signaling pathways. Um, immunotherapy is different because we're utilizing either um, drugs that mimic the immune system or the patient's own immune system. And so with that um, come a different set of side effects. Usually those side effects are more immune-based side effects. Um, so with um, any type of uh, monoclonal antibody, for instance, we can see what we call infusion reactions. So reactions that look like flu-like symptoms. So similar to the way your immune system, you might feel when your immune system's active against the flu. This is, can be fevers, this can be muscle aches, um, fatigue, um, shortness of breath. Um, and they're directly related to when we're physically giving the patient the antibodies. Once the infusion stops, typically these get better within hours, um, if not minutes. Specifically with CAR cells, um, we see other specific immune-related um, side effects um, called cytokine release syndrome, um, as well as neurotoxicity or toxicity that affects um, the neurologic system. And finally with um, checkpoint blockade, um, which is another type of antibody therapy. Typically it's actually very well tolerated and we don't see anything aside from maybe some mild fatigue, um, occasionally we see more autoimmune type effects where the um, immune system is activated and can cause rashes or inflammation of other organs. The approved immunotherapies for lymphoma really depend on which lymphoma um, we're talking about. For example, rituxan um, is typically used for most um, B cell lymphomas in some fashion, which is an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody. Um, other antibodies that you'll see used for um, the lower grade lymphomas um, include obinutuzumab for CLL, SLL, um, as well as ofatumumab um, for um, follicular lymphoma. There are other antibodies that are more specific for um, T cell lymphomas of the skin, such as mogamolizumab, um, and then brentuximab vindotin um, is used for CD30. Um, expressing lymphomas, so that can be both T and B cell lymphomas. That's it mostly for the antibodies. Um, lenalidomide is used in both B and T cell lymphomas, um, and that's an immunomodulatory agent. The, its official approval um, is um, in mantle cell lymphoma, but we use it in some of the other lymphomas as well. Um, and then CAR T cells are approved for diffuse large B cell lymphoma, high grade B cell lymphoma, transformed follicular lymphoma, and then um, primary mediastinal large B cell lymphoma. So checkpoint inhibitors, um, and that's pembrolizumab and nivolumab are approved for Hodgkin lymphoma, as well as um, for primary mediastinal large B cell lymphoma. CAR T cell therapy um, is a genetically modified um, T cell therapy. So what we do is we take the patient's T cells and genetically engineer them um, to target a specific protein um, on expressed on the cancer cell. So that allows us to modify the patient's own immune system to attack the, the lymphoma. First, obviously, a decision needs to be made to uh, that patients will be treated with CAR T cells. Um, and then what's involved is initially T cell collection because we need to collect the patient's own T cells so that we can turn them into CAR cells. So patients um, have a catheter placed um, either in their neck or in their chest usually um, to collect the T cells and then that's a daily process between placing the catheter and then uh, patients are attached to a machine that um, pulls the blood out through the catheter, um, pulls out specifically the T cells and then the rest of the blood is returned to the patient. So that's the collection process. Um, then the cells are frozen and shipped off to be manufactured into CAR T cells. But while that process is happening, um, we have to keep the patient healthy and doing well. Um, and so patients will typically receive bridging therapy, meaning therapy to keep the lymphoma under control while the CAR cells are manufactured. And then once we receive confirmation that the CAR cells have been made, um, the patients receive lymphodepleting therapy. That's chemotherapy, but not with the intention of using it to treat the cancer. 
it's chemotherapy used with the intention of um, creating space, meaning for the CAR T cells to grow and um, proliferate once they're infused. So it's chemotherapy, but it depletes the patient's normal um, B and T cells so those CAR cells can expand. Finally, the patients get their, T their CAR T cells. Um, so usually the process of manufacturing is somewhere between three to five weeks, depending on which CAR product's given. And then after the T cell infusion, we typically observe patients very closely for the first month. Um, so that's also pretty time intensive. Bispecific antibodies are um, a combination of two different antibodies, so they target two different proteins, um, and they're combined with a linker uh, molecule that keeps them together. One of the bispecific antibodies um, is called uh, mosunetuzumab, so that's an anti-CD3, so that targets T cells, um, and an anti-CD20 antibody, which targets B cells, and so what it's doing is it's bringing um, T cells into the proximity with the tumor, which expresses CD20. There are many ways to learn more about your disease, but it's always a challenge to sift through um, a lot of that material because the internet has no filter. Obviously, the LRF website has really a vast variety of resources that are available to the patients. There's the helpline that's available um, for patients to call if they want to talk to someone in person. They have a lot of good literature on the website. Um, and they do a great job with these educational sessions to allow patients to really ask questions that are specific and pertinent for their understanding of their disease. Also, really utilizing their oncologist as well as their healthcare team to make sure that their questions are getting addressed and that they have a really good understanding of what's going on is something that they should feel encouraged and not shy about pursuing because that's in large part why the physicians are there, not just to take care of them, but to make sure they understand. I think there's so many good questions you could ask for um, ask of your oncology team to make sure you really do understand what's going on. I think understanding what the treatment options are is critical because a lot of times in lymphoma it's not always clear what the best option is and so understanding the risks and benefits of each treatment option that's being considered um, can be very helpful. I think it's important to know what the side effects are of the different drugs that are being considered and why one's being recommended over another. Other things that are important is patients should always ask about clinical trials. Not only does it help um, advance the field forward, it also helps because they may have access to new drugs that they might that might be very exciting that they would un otherwise be unable to access. And finally, I think as we have so many new drugs, especially in immunotherapy, so quickly, and there's so many, and literally each month there are new drugs that we're hearing about, um, clarifying what the long-term experience with those drugs um, is would be is very helpful to know what to expect. Generally, for lymphoma, we have a good sense of what to start with. And then if patients require further therapy down the line, it becomes less and less clear what the next best treatment is. For immunotherapy, specifically CAR T cells, um, we have good data that CAR T cells should be used for um, patients who've relapsed after two or more prior therapies. So that's, again, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, high-grade B-cell lymphoma, transformed follicular, and primary mediastinal B-cell lymphoma. For other immunotherapies, it's a lot less clear where that therapy belongs. Hodgkin lymphoma is another one where we have a little bit better sense, meaning that um, immunotherapy is typically third-line therapy, meaning after patients fail to respond to initial chemotherapy and or um, brentuximab or a stem, cell, um, a stem cell transplant. But we're working to figure out the best way to combine immunotherapy um, with our other therapies to get the best responses possible. For example, in follicular lymphoma, we now have data that immunotherapy alone, so lenalidomide with rituximab, is just as good as chemotherapy for those patients. So that's really exciting that we're seeing it move to the front line. And the most exciting thing is the rapidity with which we're developing new drugs and the impact those drugs are really having. I think CAR T cells are an excellent example of that. Um, we're tripling the response rates for patients who previously had um, very limited options for their disease and were quite sick. And we're literally offering these people a new chance to be normal again. And it's just so gratifying to be part of. And what's really fascinating is the fact that we're now learning how to manipulate the immune system better to fix some of these deficits that we have in the immune system, which is allowing cancer to be present in the first place, and re-engineering that to allow the patient's own immune system to attack the cancer. I think what we need to figure out more is how to make that more specific just for the cancer and how to um, avoid side effects, which is something that's one of the challenges in that field.